Hey guys, I'm back. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Coco Loca here, bringing you the best tips, tricks, and tutorials to make having fun affordable. And in today's video, we are doing a Valentine's Day wreath. It's something that I wanted to put on my door <laughs> or my office at work. Um, so I I just stuck with traditional red and white for the color scheme but I really was trying to try a new technique and you guys will see in the video that I messed up or I didn't like how I started and so I ended up redoing the whole wreath so you guys will see that um this is my first video of the year 2021 happy new year everybody and I hope you guys enjoy. There is more to come because I'm really trying to challenge myself with my 12 days of Christmas challenge. I really pushed myself to post, 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 post. So I'm really trying to stick to that goal of posting at least once a week, uh, bringing you guys the best DIYs and tutorials and also showing you guys my mistakes and the things that I mess up on and my kind of the way I think about my DIYs as I'm doing them I might change something so I think it's really good to just show that and show that you know hey I'm sometimes learning as I go or I have an idea I don't know how it's going to turn out so I just want you guys to come along on the ride with me this year so uh Without further ado, let's get into the video. So first I wanna run through the supplies real quick. You're gonna need a 12 inch wire wreath form, a five and a half inch white deco mesh, and then red 10 inch deco mesh. You're also gonna need some chenille stems. These come, I believe, automatically in 12 inches. You're gonna need a rotary cutter, um, a cutting mat if you're cutting on your dining room table like I am, scissors, and some type of ruler. So, first thing we are going to do is kind of count out all of our anchor points, I call them. Um, these are the points that are gonna keep the mesh really secure. So, there's about six anchor points on a 12 inch reed form and on the bigger forms there's actually I think eight anchor points and I usually use the anchor points as a guide when I'm working with more than one color so I'm going to use the white and use that on the anchor points and then the red will just fill in between where the white is so first you need to roll out your mesh. This cutting mat has measurements on it, so it helps me measure, and I just use my ruler to hold down my mesh roll so it doesn't roll up on me. And then you're going to roll out about, I would say anywhere between 10 to 15 inches to get a good roll or a good ruffle on a 10 inch mesh roll. So once my rotary cutter actually is working, um, my blade actually was coming to loose so I had to tighten it. But you're going to roll out, I like to just make things symmetrical and have like a number in my head. So if there are six anchor points, I'll try and roll out double or triple the number of anchor points I have. So then that way I know that I have more than enough mesh already ready to go and secure it to my wreath. So once you have all your mesh pieces cut, you're going to get your chenille stems or pipe cleaners, whatever you want to call them. And I usually fold these in half, so that would give me, for every stem, that would give me a six inch piece to secure my mesh with. You could also fold them into threes but I just like to have a little extra just in case I want to add mesh on and layer the mesh instead of just using one color per stem. 
So this technique is called ruffling. You're going to take the cut end, so the non-hemmed end, and you're going to roll it on top of itself for like one inch. And then you're going to ruffle or pinch the middle with your hands all the way till you get to the top and then kind of fold in or roll in the other unhemmed end and pinch it in the middle and then you're going to take your stem and I like to shape it a little bit in my hand before I attach the stem and you take your stem and you put your your stem on wrapping it from front to back and then twisting the stem a few times in the back and that's one ruffle and so the stem end you would attach to the wire form and you continue this process until you have all your pieces connected. I just cut off a loose piece of mesh right there, but that's pretty much how you ruffle your deco mesh. And I'm going to continue this process for all the pieces of red ruffle that I cut. So I just sped this up so you guys can actually see me do this multiple times to kind of get an understanding of how this process works. And then next we'll move on to the white pieces. So this is the part where I really didn't know what I was doing. I was trying something new. It's not a technique that I've seen on YouTube before, so I thought in my head it made sense, but it really didn't. Um, right here I was rolling the mesh about 15 inches of the white shorter mesh, still using the same technique as far as leaving the hemmed edges on the left and the right, but I roll, loosely rolled about an inch thick um, tube or cylinder looking piece and then pinching it in the middle instead of ruffling it and then attaching my stem so here I still cut my Chanel stem in half and then attached it around my white deco mesh but since this is the five and a half inch I think I I probably should have cut my stems smaller like into thirds instead of halves um, but since I wasn't 100% sure on how this would look I figure leave it long just in case I need to use those stems to attach it a different way so I twisted a couple times and then I'll repeat this process again um, and I did this the same number of times that I had for red I did for white because in my mind I wanted to alternate the colors since I was only using two colors I figure just do red white red white um, so I think I did about 15 15 to 18 of these and then I started to attach my mesh and you'll see in a few minutes like how it started to look I just really was not happy with it so I used right here I used the shorter deco mesh the five and a half white and I attached it to the two bottom rings or inner rings of the wire form and I just twisted it and kind of curled it on itself and then I alternated and got the red color but this time with the red since it was a little larger and a little bigger I attached it to the two middle rings So when you are making a deco mesh wreath, I always, no matter how many colors I'm using, I always like to use either the two inner rings or the two middle rings. Um, the reason for this is the outer ring just seems like it's going to get caught when you hang it up. And so I like to leave that loose and on its own. So when I am hanging it or attaching it to a wall or whatever, I have space to do that without my mesh getting caught in the hook. So I was trying to bunch this together and kind of shape these because I wanted it to look like the white was kind of like the flower, the middle flower 
part of the wreath and then the red was like the red petals of a flower but as I started to basically put all these on and I think I got halfway and I started to look at my wreath and I was like oh no this is this is not cute this is <laughs> this is not how I envisioned this to be so I actually started to do a different technique I just don't know why I just didn't like how it looked I don't know what you guys think but it just looked ugly to me so here is where I watched a couple YouTube videos and then I saw a different technique that used a like a rolling pin or like a curling stick I don't know what it was called but I'm using a dowel that I have and I'm just starting at one corner of the mesh still using the same 15 inch pieces and rolling it at an angle and diagonally from corner to corner so I'm still getting that same like thickness but it's kind of angled on the ends and a little looser and not so tight in the middle so it actually makes it look a little more whimsical I don't know I I really don't know what this technique is called but I feel like it did help with improving my wreath and then instead of attaching them individually I just opted to take the white and add it to the back so this is what I was saying about keeping your stems long so you can add mesh to the ruffles if you need to or add ribbon if you need to and I just kind of sprinkled the white around at the anchor points so I just I was just over the white I don't know what it was I was just over the white so I just put the white where all the anchor points were and maybe a few more so I think I had maybe about 10 or 12 white pieces and then everything else was just filled with the red so I think this turned out a little better than I anticipated um, obviously I ran into a mistake but as you can see sometimes you just have to make adjustments when you make mistakes and I really think this turned out better than anticipated and this is the wreath on my door at work so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and I will catch you next time.